So we have the Genesee here, and uh, you are accelerating Linux. In every possible aspect. Uh, right now, uh, the usual situation with Linux is that, uh, on ARM that is, is that we're using one specific uh, ABI, an application binary interface. Uh, for historical reasons, uh, ARM uses soft ABI, soft FP uh, ABI. This basically means that for floating point intensive applications, you basically lose performance. Uh, this has not changed for many years because uh, no one really wanted to go into the trouble of doing it. Because it basically absolutely requires you to recompile everything. And this is a lot of work. So what we've done with uh, Armhard Flow is we, the, we did the, that extra step that was necessary. And we recompiled everything. The result is really astounding. You basically have an application heavy flow on floaty point uh, uh, operations that can be up to 300% faster. You don't need to do any special optimizations like Neon or have a special encoder or decoder chip. You just need to basically rebuild your, prob your program, your application. Rebuild what? Your application. Take the source code, take it from a soft floating point uh, system to a, to a hard float point system and it will, it will go faster. But what area is Ubuntu or what are you rocking with? It doesn't matter. Right now we're working with uh, Debian. Debian. Which is you know, uh, Debian is the basis of Ubuntu itself. So, what is it? Uh, is it like every corner of the OS, or is everything. it actually the apps everything. on top no, no, of no. the OS? Everything. Or? It's from the bottom uh, parts, like the C library, to the uh, to even the, the smaller plugin in the, uh, I don't know your instant messenger. So basically, everything has to be rebuilt. But we are in a very good point. I mean, we are at 90 percent right now. 90% of what? Of the complete Debian archive. We are talking about uh, 15,000 packages of software. So, so everything that Ubuntu has, we have it. So before there was this, I, I've seen for a few years ARM powered Linux mm -hmm. and some Cortex A8s, for example. Yes. And it wasn't really feeling fully fast enough. And yes. Uh, you fixed that or what? Well, we couldn't fix the. We couldn't fix everything. We made the system perform like it's supposed to. Because right now, if you, I'm going to go into a bit technical detail. In floating point applications, if you have a function that takes floating point arguments. Each of those arguments is passed through the integer unit of the CPU to the floating point unit. For each argument, that uh, basically means a 20 CPU cycle store. If you have a really f a heavy application on floating point, that is a really a great loss of, perfor of performance. Uh, we have some extreme benchmark that I can show you right now if you want. Is it Actually, yeah. let me, if you want, uh, we can... Uh, this, this is, is a Pixel this, G version of the... This is, yes. Uh, this is actually the soft floating point version. Uh, this briefcase. This is that briefcase here. So this is soft, and what do we do soft. to go in uh, hard? What basically, do do? right, this card. So this is a card that we can use to basically put into a hard floating point system. So I'm just, can I reboot? Okay. So you basically... No, I don't right now, but I can, you have to take my word for it. Okay. Uh, no. So right now we still in soft or what do you do? You reboot? This, or not? this is soft. I reboot the system which we have prepared for that reason. And uh, okay, it's going to reboot now, so we, we wait. How long time does it take? Well, it depends on the SD card. I mean, uh, if it's fast, it takes, I don't know, a minute or so. If it's really slow, it depends. So the difference, uh, like in, in pretty much every modern architecture, every CPU, every modern CPU. The floating point arguments get directly passed into the floating point unit. This means that you get absolute, the absolute maximum of performance. You don't get any CPU stalls for this reason. That enables you to have, uh, to, to make your CPU uh, go feel faster. It do doesn't really feel fast, it doesn't actually go faster, but compared to what you were used to, with the Ubuntu software, for example, which was using the SoftFP API, it is miles faster. It's really uh, 
So how is the arm different from X86 ah, in terms of floating point? How do, how's it's, how's it's, it it's really different. Okay, if you compare directly in absolute numbers, an ARM CPU with an Intel CPU, there's no comparison. If you do, or if you, however, take in account to account the power consumption and things that you can do on an ARM CPU that you absolutely cannot do on an Intel CPU, like MPEG decoding at 1080p with at 7 watts of power, this cannot be done on an Intel CPU, period. Uh, and you can also do uh, more stuff like, hey, they, uh, it, it basically has to do with the way the ARM architecture is designed. Uh, they don't just, ARM does not really sell CPUs, they sell the architecture, they sell the core design, and every company can actually pull stuff and bind them together into a, a complete solution. So this is why you have a very low end uh, CPUs, extremely low power, that can do high definition decoding, encoding, they have a security engine on, on the CPU, which is very good at uh, you know cryptographic uh, algorithms. Um, okay, uh, with, uh, I'm returning to the floating point uh, in particular. The floating point on the Cortex A8 is an in order floating point. You know this means it's not uh, it's not really very uh, fast compared to the out of order floating point units like on the Cortex A9. Cortex A9 is literally about 10 times faster. 10 times faster. 10 times faster. You're running the same code. But Genesis had laptops last year, and this year you're updating the software basically on the AI Mix. We are updating the software. And you're already doing three times fast, up to three times fast. 300%. Yes. On the same hardware. On the same hardware. Just software update. It's exactly, only software updates. And that's without even thinking about the Cortex A9. We don't yet. think about it. Well, we are thinking about the next the new generation CPUs. But we're not uh, forcing our customers to, you know, upgrade their computers. So you have to get not yet. Not yet. We're we're going to do that. Is it fast enough now for any consumer thinking that it's going to be I'll, as fast as Intel? I'll tell you what. I, I'm personally I'm a developer, but I'm also a user. This is one of my actual. This is not not this particular one. But you don't I'm have using the Pixel G one. No, I don't have. I have a normal one. Yeah. But it's my main actually my main system of development. I actually use that for Nothing else. for every day. Dog food. Yes, basically dog food. I eat my dog food. Hundred so, percent. Everybody in the company. Ten percent. Ten percent. At home, I have a PC to play games, but yeah. That's it's gonna be fixed a, soon. Yeah, soon. Yeah. So, uh, so let's try right, it out. This is a demo. It's loading into a GNOME desktop environment. It's nothing fancy really at this moment, but. Uh, don't forget that this is actually in Debian right now, so every, any user that would uh, like to test it right now, they don't have to get a custom image or some uh, you know, official support, they can just install Debian. I, I mean, it works. So what's it doing? Still booting? It's still, it, it, the SD card. Is, uh, SD it's card? Yeah. Does it do it, make it slower to, to run from the SD card instead of the yes, local basically storage? Yes, the SD cards are not really very, far, very known to be fast. Uh, I'm using it on the internal fast and it's absolutely fast. It's, it's, it's blazing fast. So, so when are you releasing this uh, hard float version? Is it, it is already released. You released it? Well, we haven't released an image yet. We're going to do it right after the uh, FTF. But uh, if one really wants to use that, they can even now. I mean, and the good thing about that is that it's not really... So, here is a basic uh, basic uh, RMHF desktop, it's there. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do a very small, it's not going to be very impressive, but it's going to be really to the point of, of, of proving that uh, hard float is really the way to the future. So yes, please forgive my SD card, it's very slow. Okay. So right. Right now, what I have here is, this one is a scene from a, a known open source ray tracer, which is not, it's called Povray. Povray, I have the executable here. So it's going to start rendering on a very small window. It's going to start rendering uh, real time, uh, sorry, it's going to start rendering uh, a chess scene, a scene of chess pieces. 
So what's going on here? It's rendering, real time. Even we're doing that on a soft floating point, and if you come tomorrow, I'm going to show you the, the exact different, the exact same thing, running on the, on the same hardware. This is this uh, here running hard float, and the other running soft float. So it's already at line 42, and it's 30 seconds. On soft floating point, this now would be at line 15. 15. So this is when it finishes. We don't have to, you know, yeah. we don't have to wait for the scene to finish. But can we check some other stuff? Can you show some fast uh, stuff going on? Uh, I could. Any other? Well. We have Firefox. Well, in that minutes, really rebranded uh, Ice Weasel. As Ice Weasel. Yeah. Which is running on. Uh, actually, this is running at the same time. The rendering is not finished. The rendering is still going. The rendering is still going. Okay. We can do we can do some. Have you used the smart book before? Yeah. Okay. So, have you noticed the speed the speed of uh, rendering in in websites. the websites? You know, on websites, yeah. right? It can be slow. It can be slow. So, do you have internet? I think so. Is there Ethernet on this one? Or not? It has wireless. So. More networks. Oh wow. Yeah, it's gonna oh. be difficult to get any internet here. That's right. Might work maybe. But then um, you're gonna release this on existing and you're gonna totally use it for the future of Genesee and future. Well, the nice thing about it is that uh, other distributions and other companies were actually convinced that Hardflow is the way to go. So, Linaro, you know, Linaro is a consortium of ARM companies. It includes Freescale, uh, Canonical itself as, an, uh, as, a, as a partner. Uh, Genesis, of course, we, are, we got in there. We are partners to Linaro. So, the Linaro is doing hard floats? Yes. That's the way They it's were going. convinced, and they actually, uh, we convinced them. I would go as far as to say that we convinced them to go hard float. Everyone else was saying, that now hot float is, mm, it's too difficult. Let's wait for a couple of years and see what happens. But we got it, we, we showed to them. We told them that here it is, see how fast it is. And they were convinced. And now uh, Migo is going hard float. Uh, they actually based their uh, hard float port on our work. Android? Android is also considering going hard float. Considering? Considering, yes. There are, a bit, uh, there, there's, uh, there are some differences there. Because uh, Android is, in essence, is a, a JVM, a Java virtual machine, and Java applications running on top. So they had to figure out how to fix that, how to take advantage of the extra CPU performance without, uh, uh, say, without sacrificing binary compatibility with existing applications, which is a very major issue for Android. So. Uh, Red Hat, the Fedora new port for ARM is also going for the, to use hard float. And many other uh, distributions like uh, Cruise, uh, Cruise, Gen2, uh, Xibo, and way too many. To what mention. do you do at Genesee? And where do you come from? What did you do before? Oh, right. Um, well, I've worked for Genesee since 2004. And I was, right, at that time, Genesee was uh, a PowerPC uh, product. Uh, Manufacturer, basically, we created our own power PowerPC board. Uh, at the time, I was working on the power on the PowerPC Altivec CMD engine, which is uh, similar to Neon and SSC as found in uh, uh, Intel CPUs. Basically, it's a, a way to make your programs run faster. You vectorize, you optimize your algorithms to use a specific unit inside the CPU. And you have the uh, the application run faster. You might perhaps see that some applications say SSC enabled or SSC optimized. Well, Neon is exactly the same thing for ARM, and Altivix is, is exactly the same thing for uh, PowerPC CPUs. It basically makes your application go faster. So uh, for many years you've been working on software and hardware optimization. Yes, yes. I'm a software guy. I don't software do software yeah. optimization. Yes, yes. Take care of what the hardware can do. Yes, I, I'm. I really like software optimization. As a principle, I cannot stand bloated software. I really cannot stand it. I mean, yeah. what do you think about Windows 7 compared to Windows Vista? Is less bloat? Next question. 
sorry. I'm yeah. just joking. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But uh, that's cool. Thanks yeah, a lot. And uh, looking forward to a lot of other news yeah, here. Uh, we're going to do more videos here at the. Yeah, sure. Thanks.